Welcome all. I'm Raj from Hyden, Australia, National Development Manager for Mobile Hydraulics. Uh, thanks for joining me today. And I'll be talking about our medium heavy duty variable Excel piston pump, PPV100M, designed for open circuit applications. It can also be used or applied in a semi closed loop system, which is basically a cost effective version of the closed loop system. The PPV100M was specifically developed for mobile applications as the next generation pump in the HIDEC PPV100 family. This next generation pump is more compact, offers the best power density in its class with longer life expectancy. Uh, some of the topics we'll cover today the PPV100M design philosophy, some of the unique features that differentiates our pump to the competition, an overview of the technical data, types of controllers in the AMR range, interchangeability with uh, other pumps in the market, an overview of the Australian market range, uh, through drive arrangements, and an application example. Now let's have a, take a closer look at the PPV100 design philosophy. It offers a unique single acting control piston with special coding, which allows for faster response and recovery times and minimizes friction, thus improving the operating life of the pump. It offers improved power density and performance. For example, it has 8% better power to, eight, uh, power to weight ratio at the lowest displacement and 23% better power to weight ratio at the highest displacement compared to a conventional uh, variable displacement pump. A simplified pump architecture, as you can see, uh, with approximately 25% less components, thus reducing the number of leak points, simplified maintenance, easier diagnostics with reduced spare parts. It uh, uses a hollow piston design technology, which reduces the, the centrifugal forces, which then allows for higher speed operation. It has the optimized uh, port plate design, which allows for much quieter operation and improves the durability of the pump. The PPV100M offers some of the very unique features as the next generation pump. It has three K strain ports, which simplifies the installation process or fitment process as real estate and accessibility is always an issue in mobile applications. It also has a easier and allows for easier rotation change compared to a conventional variable displacement pumps in the market, whereby you just have to remove the rear cover, take out the port plate, go from left to right or right to left, Turn the rear cover by 180 degrees and put it back on. As simple as that, which massively reduces your inventory and reduces your labor cost. A win-win situation. It also offers much easier shaft changeover for all the displacements, whereby you just have to remove the seal retainer, pull the shaft out, put this new shaft in and put the uh, seal retainer back on. It has a dedicated bleed port for the front bearing and it offers standard mounting flange uh, for all the controllers, even for the pressure sensor. A quick overview of the PPV100M technical data. It offers displacements from 18 cc's to 100 cc's per rev. The pump can be supplied with a left hand or a right hand rotation. It offers nominal pressures of up to 315 bar. Again, the best in its class with maximum pressures of up to 350 bar. With speeds up to 3,400 RPM due to the optimized inlet conditions. And it's compatible with HL and HLP fluids and other fluids at request from Hydec. The PPV100 will be offered with the following nominal displacements, 18, 
28, 45, 63, 85, and 100. Below that is the geometric displacement, which should be used for your computational purposes. The pump will also be supplied, will also have a mechanical displacement limiter. And this is the minimum displacement you can achieve for each displacement, which is the next size down, apart from the 18cc, which will not have a mechanical displacement. The seals will be fluorocarbon seals, and the filtration should be class 9 or better. Uh, let's review some of the finer details that occasionally gets overlooked when you're designing a system. The duration of the maximum pressure. It should not exceed 5 milliseconds in a single operating period or 300 hours in the total operating period. This is the formula. Otherwise, it significantly reduces your pump life. The case when pressure should never exceed one bar in the normal operating condition of 0.5 bar higher than the inlet pressure with a, with a four bar peak. The permissible suction pressure range should be from 0.8 to five by absolute. And we should always try to be within this range for optimum pump performance and longevity. Sometimes you may want to run the pumps higher than the rated speeds, whereby we can either increase the inlet pressure for argument's sake uh, at 0 0.8 we have a we have an input speed of 2920 rpm however if we increase the inlet pressure to one bar we can run the same displacement and the same pump at 3200 rpm that's one number two you can derate the displacement of the pump so if it's a 28 cc pump we can derate the displacement to up to 21 cc and it can increase your input speed so it all depends on your application requirements and if you have any any issues regarding this uh, please consult a hardic uh, technical team for any support the pbv 100m will have three types of controllers as a part of the amr program the the pressure controller this maintains a constant system pressure by varying the output flow of the, of the pump. In the depressurized state, the pump is at the maximum displacement due to this bias spring. In the standby mode, when used with a closed center valve and the P port is blocked, the pressure starts to build in this channel and pushes the pressure limiting spool to the right. And once it's overcome, achieves this and once the pressure limiting spool moves to the, completely to the right, once this is achieved, this will feed the control pressure from the pump into the control piston, which then destrokes the pump to near zero dis displacement. The pump shifts to the pressure comp setting, or also known as the high pressure standby mode. The pressure comp setting range for our pumps is from 20 bar to 300 N. 20 bar. So this is the range you can set your PC. The next controller, the remote pressure controller is a two-stage controller, is a two-stage controller, as you can see on the screen, that allows multiple pressure setting from 20 to 315 bar. The, it is very similar to the load sense controller with an additional, with an additional channel that connects the external relief valve to the to the pressure remote pressure cutoff spool, and then to the pressure limiting spool, and then to the pump outlet for proper functioning. If you vent the pilot line to the tank with a solenoid valve, then the pump will shift to the remote pressure cutoff setting, which is the low standby mode. And the remote pressure cutoff setting range for our pump is from 10, 10 to 20 bar. If you, if you block this pilot line, then the pump will shift into the pressure comp setting or whatever the pressure comp setting is. And this is also known as the high pressure standby mode. And again, the PC setting range for the, the pressure comp is from 20 to 320 bar. The load sense control, the, on the screen, you can see the load sense control. 
This matches system requirements for both pressure and flow. In the standby mode, when used with a closed center valve and the P port is blocked, the pressure starts to build in this channel and it pushes against the pressure limiting spool, which with a heavier spring and the loading spool with a lighter spring. It will eventually push the lighter spring to the right and then feed the control pressure from the pump, from the pump into the control piston, which then will destroke the pump to near zero displacement. The pump shifts into the load sense setting or also known as the low pressure standby mode. The load sense setting range for our pumps is from 10 to 30 bar. The standby pressure can be calculated using the formula whereby we can also use the formula to calculate the standby pressure, which is the spring constant multiplied by the spring displacement divided by the area of the piston. This gives you standby pressure. The load sense control can also be supplied with a bleed orifice. And that's your bleed orifice on the schematic here. This prevents the high pressure lockup of the pump control. If the control valve doesn't have a internal load sense bleed orifice. So you have to be very careful when you're selecting your controllers to match your control valve for optimum performance. Generally, you should avoid the pump having a bleed orifice and your control valve having a bleed orifice as well. Otherwise, we will have difficulty or you will have difficulty in stroking your pump. What does the future look like for, our, for, for the PPV100 controllers? Soon, we will have the electronic displacement control as part of our AMR program. This allows the pump displacement to be controlled infinitely by the control signal to the solenoid control valve. The, this solenoid control valve provides the control force to move the control piston so that the control piston can upstroke and destroke your pump, whereby the control signal in, in milliamps, the control signal is directly proportional to your displacement. So if you increase the control signal, your displacement will increase. The pump can also be supplied with a angle sensor and a pressure sensor for allowing total power management in any system. Now, the interchangeability of our PPV100M pump with other new, gener new generation pumps in the market. The PPV100 can easily replace the Danfoss K2 frame, the Danfoss J series frame, the Rexroth 52 and 53 series, the Eaton 220 and 420 series, and the Parker P1M. The PPV100M provides an optimum coverage in its class. For example, the Parker P1M, P1M has only a displacement range from 28 cc's to 54 cc's with a nominal pressure of 280 bar. The Danfoss K2 and the J frame has a displacement range from 25 cc's to 75 cc's with a nominal pressure of 310 bar. The Eaton 420 has a displacement range from 18 cc's per rev to 80 cc's per rev with a nominal pressure of 280 bar. The Rexroth 52 and 53 series have a displacement range from 18 cc per rev to 100 cc per rev with a nominal pressure of only 250 bar. Now, the PPV100 has a displacement range of 18 cc per rev to 100 cc per rev with a nominal pressure of 315 bar. Again, the best in its class. Interchangeability with conventional pumps in the market the PPV100 can also replace the Rexroth 31 series 
the, the Brevini S5 AV, the Danforth Series 45, the Eaton PVH, and the Parker P1. So it gives a good coverage in the new generation pump and also in the conventional variable displacement pumps available in the market. A quick overview of our Australian market range. These are the displacements we will carry in the first phase. The 18cc pump will have a SA two hole flange and a 11 tooth spline shaft to the ANSI standards. And these are your suction and pressure ports to code 61 and code 62 respectively. The 28cc will have a SAEB two hole flange and a 13 tooth spline shaft. The 45cc will have a SAEB two hole flange and a 15 tooth spline shaft. The 63cc will have two options. It will either have a SAEB two hole flange, as you can see in the picture, and a SAC four hole flange is also in the picture. Uh, and again, you'll have two types of shafts, the 15 tooth, which is a SABB and a 14 tooth, which is a SAC. You'll also have in the 85 CC, you'll have the options of a SAC with a two and a four hole combination. So the, the single flange will give you the option of either two hole or four hole mounting flange with a 17 tooth spline shaft, or some people will say SAECC. And finally, the 100 CC, again, very similar to your 85 CC pump. Uh, it will have a two and a four hole combination flange, uh, 17 tooth spline shaft is a SAECC. Uh, for the controllers in the first phase of the release, uh, we will only have the, the pressure con compensator, the remote pressure compensator, and the load sense with or without bleed orifice. And as I mentioned in my previous slide, the electronic displacement controller is not far. So what's the space? Uh, the PVV100M pump will have multiple through drive configurations uh, to suit your application requirements. For the 18cc PRF uh, pump, we will have the options of uh, SAEA and uh, AB. For the 28cc, you can have an A, A, B, and a B. For the 45cc, you can have a SAEA, AB, AI, which is at an angle for our 18cc pump, BB. 63cc, uh, they will also give you the option of A, AB, AI, B, BB, and C. Uh, with 85 and 100cc, they'll, they'll give you an option of A, AB, a, I, B, B, C, and C. So as you can see, there's a lot of options, uh, through drive kit options that uh, our PPV 100M program will offer to you. Uh, it will be available mid to late Q2 and will keep you all posted uh, when it's officially in here in Australia. Now let's, let's review a, a simple 25 kilowatt hydraulic water pump drive system. That we did for that we did recently for an OEM. The system consisted of our, our PPV 100 amp pump, driven by the truck PDO, which then feeds into our LX6 pressure compensated load sensing uh, valve, which then feeds into our MPF 202 or 203 bent axis fixed, fixed displacement piston motor to drive the water pump. The return flow, the return flow goes through our 851 integrated cooler tank filter unit. So this is a, a very simple and a very basic uh, hydraulic uh, system that we did recently did for an OEM. At this point, I would like, also like to share something with you uh, that is, I believe is quite important. The three reasons why we got the order, uh, which was purely price driven, and we were not the cheapest in the market, but these are the three reasons on how we skewed the order. Number one, the 63 CCPA rev pump was able to be directly mounted to the truck PDO, which tells us now that the PPV100M is very compact. Number two, 
the reduced number of component tree. We only had four components in the system. So that's again a very complex system. And finally, number three, we we're able to make the system more efficient and able to reduce the running cost. So at the end of this exercise, when we sat down with the, with the LVM and offered the project, the price factor became irrelevant. So we'll always be more than happy to assist you with all your application requirements. So please let us know. Thanks guys, thanks for listening to me and uh, I, I wish and pray you all have a safe and nice Easter. Thank you, thanks for listening to me.